I'm Aaron Gold for Motor Trend. This is my colleague, Frank Marcus. Between the two of us, we have about 600 years of experience <laughs> reviewing vehicles. We're out here in beautiful Brighton, Michigan for Motor Trend's 2025 Truck of the Year Awards. And Frank, you have the unenviable job of comparing these two trucks. That's right, Aaron. And this is a comparison test that has been two and a half years in the making. I've been itching to do it for two and a half years because in January 2022, Chevy unveiled its Silverado EV, a completely bespoke from the ground up, no Silverado parts in there, taking full advantage of the efficiency of packaging of an electric drivetrain and everything. Because as we all know, the Ford F-150 Lightning Motor Trend's 2023 truck of the year was an F-150 where we ripped out the engine and put a new frame in that accommodated batteries and electric. So this is like an honest to gosh electric pickup truck and this is like a way to get there two or three years ahead of Chevrolet. But see, what I've always liked about the electric F-150 is it's just like every other F-150 that you've ever driven, except it's quieter and a lot quicker. It tows very much the same. It feels the same to drive. Oh, it feels smoother, more comfy. That's true. Yeah, yeah. you don't have you don't have right. an engine, you don't have vibration. But if you've been driving F-150s for 30 years, you're going to get in this that's going to feel totally familiar. Does the Chevy do that? Well, that's the question. Uh, that's what we're here to answer. Uh, and that's uh, a big part of the whole deal. You know, I, I kind of, I have mixed feelings because I like the fact that Chevy has kind of decided to do something a little bit different. It doesn't have a traditional body, for example. They moved everything around to give more space for the gigantic battery, which is, what's the range of this thing, 400 miles? We got at least that on our Motor Trend uh, road trip range, so yeah. It's above that. I happen to think range anxiety is a bit of a, it's kind of baloney because most EV owners will have a charger at home. That's the best way to go. You get a full tank every morning. But I got to tell you, when you get in and turn this thing on, which you do by stepping on the brake pedal and you see range 400 miles, just makes you feel like you could take on the world. It's true. And it's also, it's not just the range, it's the fast charging speed as well, because that two layer battery, that 205 kilowatt hour battery is two batteries, one on top of the other, it runs at 400 volts when it's driving the car, but when you stop at a charger, it goes into a, a, a series mode and it gives you 800 volt. So that way you can get the, they rate it for 350 kilowatt. We saw 260 something this week as we charged it. So much faster because I can tell you, I ran our long-term truck of the year test car for the F-150. My parents live in Memphis, Tennessee. I live here in Detroit area and it's painful to drive this car down there. I mean, it takes me 11 hours in an ice car. It took like 14 plus with the stops and the, you know, this one doesn't work, this charger doesn't work, that one doesn't work. Slow charging, because this is only 400 volt. So yeah, it was a pain point that this thing is supposed to solve. So you're saying, so with the faster charging on this truck and the longer range, you're saying this is the, the car that you'd rather take for that long trip down to Memphis. But let's say you're doing something around the house, you got to haul wood, you got to haul rocks. Which of these two would you take? Well, now that's what's so interesting. Uh, this one is a little bit better set up for that. The bed is a little bit larger. It's also got, I don't know if it's composite or if it's just got a spray and liner or whatever. It's a little more durable, but it is several inches longer because again, taking advantage of that compact powertrain, they've scooted the, the cabin forward a little bit, made the front area smaller because we're not, we don't have to put a V8 in there in any of them and made the bed a little longer because the overall length is a, very close to the same on these cars. Yeah, but that's what people sometimes forget is you really don't need to put anything up here. You don't need an engine. Uh, this I think has a long hood for the sake of tradition. The reason the F-150 Lightning has such a long hood is because there's still space in here for an engine, which it doesn't have. Right. So you get 14 cubic feet of a frunk in here and 10 something in that one. I would fit more comfortably in this one, but I'm not really riding in it, so. No, but your groceries are. No. And there's enough space for a big shopping in the front of this. There is. Apparently a giant stroller doesn't fit in there. So one of our colleagues is like, eh, maybe it's not big enough. Issue. Maybe you need a smaller stroller. And of course, the other thing that's so interesting about this one is that it, like the old Avalanche, remember that one? It was a Suburban turned into a pickup truck. It, it has a mid gate that goes down. So you can put up to 10 foot long things if you put down the, the, uh, the, the tailgate and put up the little load limiter. So uh, that, that's a, a really huge thing. And of course, you can fold the mid gate down and leave the window in and you can fold it 60% or 100%. So you can still get three people sitting in there and some long things in there if you're a skier with more than six foot long skis. skis. Uh, that would be great because you can leave the tonneau cover 
and the window, so the car is weather tight, and yet it's got this long eight foot plus space in there. You know, I was thinking first when I thought about the mid-gate and loading it where you drop down, you're essentially opening the cabin to the outside air. I thought, no, that's dangerous because it sucks the exhaust back out. Oh, wait, we don't have to worry about that because in an electric vehicle, the exhaust is, you know, down by the river where the coal-fired power plant is. Exactly. You know, but the thing about it, we, we, we had a chance to tow with both these vehicles, fairly large trailers. And what I admired about the F-150 is it towed like just like every other F-150. Nice stability, good control with the regenerative brake. The Chevrolet was kind of moving around a little bit and porpoising and getting shoved by the trailer and kind of doing the, doing the big trailer Watusi a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and I'm not exactly sure how to explain that because this one made out of steel, made out of aluminum, giant battery, more normal size battery, it weighs a ton more than this one. Literally, we're a not being, you're not, you're not saying a figurative ton. You literally mean it literally weighs 2,000 pounds more yeah. than the F-150. So, and it's got within millimeters on the, uh, on the wheelbase. So I'm not sure how to explain that. Uh, another thing that, that is a kind of a problem with this one, it's got a lot more horsepower than this one, 180 more horsepower. When you get in it, it rears back enough that the front end gets really light, and that's even worse when you've got a big trailer adding some tongue weight in the back. And now the helm is a little nerve-wracking. No longer is attached to the road, which again, in a 9,000-pound vehicle, you don't expect to have How problems How is that possible? With <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it seems like we kind of have an interesting conundrum because you've got the Chevrolet, which has tried to do something very new and create a different experience, not necessarily for the positive, then you got the good old F-150 Lightning, which is just another F-150 and does everything we expect an F-150 to do. Yeah. You know, if I'm an electric car enthusiast, I'm thinking this is the way I want to go. If I'm just a truck user who wants to learn a gasoline engine and save all that money on fuel and all that, I'm kind of thinking this might be the way to go. The happy thing is you're the one writing the comparison, so I don't have to decide. What do you think? Well, and tapping the brakes on this one a little bit. First of all, we're at a funny point in time where the only one of these that civilians can get is an RST first edition, you know, full, all singing, all dancing, every option, 96 grand. So we paired it with as snazzy uh, an F-150 Lightning as we could get, and this thing's like 90 grand. And you get in this car, and it looks like it's designed to, you know, a price point for the work truck down in the 50s. You know, dolled up, it's got leather and it's got red and blue stitching all over the place. Sometimes in places where it doesn't have any real business being and not perfectly well executed either. This one, on the other hand, is, is Ford's new top of the line Platinum and it's absolutely gorgeous all the way through. I mean, it's not quite as nice as the top of the line Ram, but it's damn close. And it feels a lot more like 90 grand in this interior than in this one. Yes, I think we, I think we discovered this has an amazing banging all of some stereo. It's got that really big, well-planned out screen right in the middle of the, of the vehicle. Yeah, I, at this one though, when you get in this, it looks a little more high tech. Obviously it's got, you know, the new, the latest Chevy screens and everything. It's got a head up display. It has a bunch of technology in there. It also has air ride, right? And then, you know, and this sophisticated electrical system and so forth. So there's a lot of those things there, but then also like the mid-gate. Okay, great idea. Kind of struggle to imagine who's gonna really use that all that often. And then also, we know how it works. The, the window comes out and it stows in the seat back and you click it in and then there's some electric releases after you've folded the seats down and you can get it down, but sometimes the electric switches don't really work and you have to go around both sides of the car if, you don't, if you're doing it alone. It's a 12-step operation. Yeah, and then when you put it back up, Half the time we'd get back in, it would say the midgate's still open, and we're like, nah, -uh. and you go back there and you have to take it all apart and slam it again to make some limit switch. You pay ninety six thousand dollars. You don't want to be slamming anything. Right. So the execution, I mean, maybe it's like Alante tops or something. You know, those were kind of uh, dodgy at the beginning, and you know, maybe they'll get it right in a little bit. But right here, right now, uh, you know, there's a few little problems like that. I came into this. Two and a half years waiting to do it, expecting this car to completely run away with it. And at the end of the day, after spending three days driving these in all kinds of conditions, I had some, some trouble. I wrote down pros and cons. So on my, my con list... Wait a second, is that your little black book? It is my little black book. I've heard a lot about your little black book. My little gray head can't remember things uh, quite well enough. So the interior plastics, everything is pebble grain and shiny. I wish someone at General Motors could be fired for that. 
you know, let, find another way. You can make plastic with a different sheen and a different grain, and it doesn't look as awful. And by the way, you could probably, they could probably find that if they sat in one of these. I know, yeah, which they had two and a half years to sit in it. The, the back seat wasn't as comfortable either because it has to do all these gymnastics for the, for the mid-gate. Much more comfortable back seat. Do you think this would be a better back seat if they hadn't bothered with the mid-gate? I think the, the work truck back seat is a good example because that one does not have the mid-gate and it doesn't have to do any of the other things and I believe that is a little comfier. There's no trailer reversing technology on this one. We got Trailer Pro Assist. I mean, Ford has kind of owned the trailering world for a long time. But on the other hand, nobody wants to go camping with their trailer in an electric car and stop every 100 miles or 150 in this one because they all get way worse mileage with a trailer. So I kind of downplayed the importance of the trailering. Uh, but this one also had, uh, you know, a, a trailer blind spot camera, which they don't do, which they do on the ICE Silverados. So not exactly sure. We do have to acknowledge that Chevrolet has one of the greatest pieces of technology I have seen, which is Super Cruise, which is a actual real live hands-off driving system only works on certain mapped roads. You can engage it. You can take your hands off the wheel. Scary prospect, but what I love about the General Motors system is it communicates so well. It's big, a big light bar on the steering wheel. It goes blue when you turn the system on. It goes green when it is ready for you to let go. And if anything is in doubt, it needs you to take over. Flash is red, buzzes your seat so you feel it in your, in your, in your tuchus. It's a very different experience from, say, Tesla's poorly named full self-driving, where you got to be you got to be worried all the time that the car is going to make a sudden left turn into the into the oncoming right turn. I think it'd be uh, no. In this case, I have had FSD do a left turn into oncoming traffic or try to. This system communicates well. I mean, it is one of the finest bits of, of electronic engineering I think I've seen. Ah, but you are forgetting about Blue Cruise which the Ford F-150 does have. Yes, it does. And yes, I did kind of forget about Blue Cruise, which is a wonderful system, but Blue Cruise will not steer when you have a trailer. And that one does. And that is a big plus. Also very frightening. That was a big one. I got to admit, that was a little outside my comfort level, taking the taking my hands off the steering wheel when uh, when there was a trailer attached. But it did it. It did a really nice job. Yeah, and I'm, I'm willing to trust that General Motors has sweated those details. I, I wouldn't do it in a cyber truck, which also uh, won't do it with the trailer on, on board. And that's better, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Our colleague Jason Gonderman says when you see a cyber truck get out of the way, full self-driving is another reason to do that. Exactly. I do have a couple more things that, that bother me about this car. Because we're packaging that big battery in here and trying to keep the, the uh, roof down for aerodynamics, because that is one of the big pluses with this, 0.331. Uh, is the aerodynamics on this. This is in the 0.4 range, I think. So much more aerodynamic. I think it's the most aerodynamic pickup truck out there, which is great um, for, that's at least part of the 400 plus miles of range. Being the most aerodynamic pickup truck is like being the tallest inchworm. Uh, but 331 is pretty good. I mean, car numbers are, are down around there or were before everyone started getting really great. Anyway, they've got a panel roof in both of these cars, but that one has no uh, shade on it. And it isn't a deep, deep, deep tint, and, and I really don't like that. Uh, that's a, it's inviting a lot of uh, heat load in the car and whatever. Uh, it does give you more headroom in the front, and that was the main reason they made it uh, standard. Also, we have to remember GM's electric cars, no Android Auto or CarPlay functionality. Now, one of our colleagues, perhaps the only one who's an Android guy, only he uses Android phones primarily, he can log into his Google account on there, and he says it, it works pretty much his Spotify and uh, I think phone calls and all that stuff comes in. He doesn't miss it very much. And with an electric car, you really do want to use the native navigation because it knows the, the instantaneous range and, and you know, the, the level of uh, con consumption that you have at the time. And can also direct you. I know the Ford will direct you based on the shortest yep. charging time. Exactly, and, and so will that one. So maybe it won't be as big a problem as folks out there who are big devotees of CarPlay think it is, but it is gonna be you know, a turn off for some buyers not to have that functionality. A lot of iPhone users out yeah. there. So yeah, that's a, that, those are the biggies on this one. Um, uh, on this one, there's there are fewer big negatives on there. It, it is this is a body on frame design, uh, the, the traditional body on frame cab and whatever. This is a unitized body sitting on a you know a, an Ultium uh, skateboard platform. So it's 
Nah, it, it's, it's body on frame kind of, but it's it's modern body on frame. And this one, you do feel a bit more NVH from that. You can feel the, the, the doors uh, moving in their frames a little bit the way you do on an, an ICE F-150. So that's a, a negative on, on this one that we didn't really talk about. So yeah, at the end of the day. Yeah, if you got to pick between them, because I got to tell you, I'm listening to your pros, I'm listening to your cons, I'm thinking about my driving experience. I don't know which of these I could necessarily pick as the better truck. Well, and I think really it is going to be, this is one of those where whatever we pick, the people that decide, hell no, I got to have CarPlay, hell no, I got to be able to put a camper on it like I do on my F-150, you know, V8, they're going to be happy with this one. I feel like at Motor Trend, we really have to be forward looking and this is such a much more forward looking vehicle. It's also better as an electric vehicle in so many ways. We didn't talk about their uh, one pedal driving system in this one too, which is another really big plus. It's, you have two levels that you can select, normal or high regeneration, and then there is a button on the steering wheel. That little paddle. That can increase it, give you on demand instantaneous all the way to a stop if you like. So if you wanna drive with no one pedal driving mode and just occasionally, use it to come to a stop, you can do that. You can put it in normal and, and add when you need it. Worked great when the trailer was on board too. So yeah, that is another thing that this one does better. So at the end of the day, we have to give the nudge to this one. We the, the, the Silverado EV is gonna win this comparison test, but by a thinner margin than we all expected going in. So the Chevrolet Silverado EV is our winner, but only by that much. By a few kilowatt hours. By a few kilowatt hours. Excellent, thank you, Frank. Thank you, Aaron. For more about the F-150 Lightning, the Chevrolet Silverado EV, all things electric or all things automotive, please visit us on the web at motortrend.com.